Welcome to Whiskey Wednesday, where we drink the finest whiskey and argue about the internet's most important topics. Because if there's anything that the internet doesn't love more, it's arguing and telling people that they're wrong. With each topic, we've chosen a side. Even if we don't really agree with it, we're gonna die on this hill. So hear us out and let us know why we're wrong. All right, so today's topic is gonna be a pretty hot, hot topic, but first, this is our first episode of this, and uh, we're calling it Whiskey Wednesday really because it rhymes. Yeah. And, uh, well, no, it doesn't rhyme. That's, uh, what do you call that when it's, they both begin with the same thing. I, I can't remember, so tell us yeah. what that's called. That but called? Uh, it's a good excuse to sit in here, drink some, drink some whiskey, and just chat. So uh, today we're drinking some American Barrels. Bought this over the summer. You can see there's not a whole lot left. It's a decent pour. I like it. And the reason why we're going with this with our first one, today we're going to be talking about if you should bother training OW, uh, you know, OWB. If you should bother going to the range all kitted up and all your tactical stuff. Or if you should live, you know, more realistic and train more realistic and just train with what you carry every day. It's not all about realism, Greg. This is literally about realism. This is Sometimes about- Sometimes you do things for fun. It's life and, you know, we train. The reason you train is so you can become better. The reason I shoot is because I like the sound do. that it makes and I go click. Pfft. So yeah, the reason, we're, so what we're talking about here, I guess at least where I'm coming from is when I pay to go train. Okay. When I'm going to an instructor to learn how to be a better shooter, I am personally going IWB, I'm going slick. Going gray man, as they call it. Because that's how I live every single day. You live slick? I live slick. He lives gray. And I carry a carry gun. I don't carry some. So, all right. So we're going to get into we've got a, a little more. Obviously, we've this, got is, a debate here. Th th this is kind of a heated topic already. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm obviously taking the right side, which is you don't should train. Side. Don't give me that. How oh. you live and how you carry every day. Train how you fight. So... We're, we're each going to have one minute to lay out our, our points. And after we each have our minute, we're going to just get into it and really... Okay, should I bring up a timer? Maybe come to blows, yeah. I should bring up a timer. Bring a timer while I start drinking. I put, uh, put my phone on silent. Yeah. Neat. It's the only way to go. One minute. What'd you say, huh? All right, I got a one minute timer ready to go. All right, why don't you start? Uh, don't really know if it makes a noise or not, so... I'll keep an eye on it. <clears throat> so just to be clear, I'm arguing that OWB is, is a good, decent way to take a class and that it's nothing wrong with doing that. So I'm gonna start, you ready? Yep, go. So the reason why I think OWB is perfectly acceptable to take a class in is a few, few main points. One, it's way more comfortable, right? I think comfort is important. That's why we make products that help with that. Uh, it's fun, right? Like it's fun to dress up and go be with your friends and I think part of classes is more than just training the fight for your life, but it's also to enjoy the sport and, and have a good time, you know, hanging out with your friends and dressing up, whatever that might be. It also has the added benefit of you get to train fundamentals, right? The, from this point forward, it doesn't matter if you're going from here to here, steps two, three, side alignment, trigger pull, it's all the same. The only difference is your draw. And as we know, drawing your gun as fast as humanly possible is it necessarily the most important skill in a gunfight? So, it's important, but not the most important. I also have a few more points here, right? It's better to train and have fun and enjoy training because you're more likely to train more. If you go and all your friends are in Gucci gear and they look sweet and you're just, dang, that was a fast minute. Yeah, that was quick. All right, cue me up. All right, man, I had a few more points here I didn't even get to make. I gotta talk faster. Are you ready, Freddy? Yep. Go. All right, I got four points on why we should train IWB. First is this, and I already said this, we carry this way, this is how we live every day, so I should train how I carry every day. We need to learn how to manipulate our garments. This is something we're gonna have to do in a life or death situation, is clear your garment, get your gun, get your reloads, get your tourniquet, all that stuff, all your gear needs to be hashed out while you're training. If you just go to the range and all your tactical dude gear, and then when it comes time to actually defend yourself, you haven't actually used your gear to, to, to that extent, who knows what you're gonna find out. You typically 
the guys that I know that like to train in full kit will typically get out there, you know, crazy race gun, you know, the giant Glock 17, giant P Duo, you know, like all these big guns. That's not, most people, that's not what they carry. If you're gonna carry a P365, you need to go, you need to train with your P365. It is a different- Time! <sighs> no, that's horribly didn't even, didn't even get to my <laughs> anti-LWB stuff, but here's where we get to- I wanna hear out what you have to say, because I think it's important. What, right. what you got going on? So here's, and I, I was kind of countering both sides as I was going through this thing. So here's, here's some of the other things that that I think you have to consider is statistically, if you need a gun, if you need to defend yourself, you're going to have to, you're going to be dressed like this. You're going to have your, your, your carry gear. Statistically, you're not going to be in World War III, guys, I'm sorry. I would argue that you're statistically you are, going to be in your underwear. It, it, with even more reason to not have full kit on. You're not gonna draw at all, you're gonna have your gun already out. You hear a crash, bang, and then all of a sudden, you so just you're gonna, grab you're gonna, your gun off your nightstand and shoot somebody. Okay, so you're gonna put your nods on, you're gonna put your plate carrier on, you're gonna put your battle belt on. You might not. You're gonna strap up in your underwear. I'm gonna grab everything no. I possibly can to defend my home. Even more reason. Rifle. To train I, with your full with, kit. With your carry gear. Or how nice. about, one of my next points is, how about just the expense. How much money do you have in, in a helmet, in nods, in plates, in your carrier, in, in your battle belt, in 18 mag holders, in pouches, all this, uh, all this stuff. How much money do you have wrapped, into, wrapped up into that that you could have used for more training, for ammo, for, for all this? Oh, like, no, don't do that. Get, There's always more money. You can always make more money. No, that's not the case. I bet. I bet everybody watching here no, has a limited amount of money. Money and, is limitless. And having we just print more money here in the U.S. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so then, I have another point, which is, okay, you, let's say, you start seeing guys coming out of the sky that are that are all all kitted up. They got the green eyes coming down from who knows Later where, on. but they're the enemy. Let's say you have enough time to get, get all your stuff on and you're looking just like them. Okay, you're Red gonna, Dawn. You're gonna go out. Red Dawn. If you have a family, what are you doing with them? Just they gotta have nods Do they too. have gear? 100%. Do they have plate carriers? Does they my, better. Does my nine year old have a plate carrier and nods and all that stuff? Like, no! Should. You're giving your nine year old a very a poor childhood. They don't have like night vision goggles and plate carriers so and explosives. Is, it's it's all great if if you're the one, all the, it's all protecting. You know what you're doing, but you got to think about at least your wife or girlfriend. I will give let you let alone this. kids and stuff. There is certainly a time and place where IWB is more practical than OWB. You mean like every day, all day? So yeah, absolutely, every day and all day, except for you're stuck with IWB around the house, around the town, in your car. Every day you have to carry this, right? Sometimes it's fun to change things up, and a class isn't just, just about training def Defender Life. It is somewhat, but it's a, it's a camaraderie thing. You go to a class to make friends who are like-minded people. And I think the OWB allows you to show off your kit, create discussions, talk about great things. Concealed is concealed. And unfortunately, you're not like, hey, let me pull out my holster and show you this in the middle of a class. But you can, while you're waiting around, look at people's you know, mag carriers and stuff like that. That's very fun. That also builds this group Think, group think. That's not what I want to say. This builds his group uh, love. I, I don't know. What's the word? Like when you like when you when you with like everybody's people. trying to keep up with the Joneses. I think is what you're saying. Everybody's trying to. No, hey, it's not keeping got? up with the Joneses. I need some of the. Oh man, my my four hundred dollar belt I just bought last week isn't it's as good as that one. It's not an envy thing. Now I need that. It's one. a congratulations thing. Uh, it's like if it's an envy thing, that's on you. So, the way I see it is. OWB is just as good because your fundamentals are the most important thing to train and all that's there. The draw may be a little different, but going from here to here, it's basically the same. A little bit more defeating of the garment, I think you need to dry fire that. When you're in a class, yes, it's important to take some of them IWB, but I think, like, let's just take the car for example. Drawing from IWB could be more dangerous in a vehicle. You have a lot more stuff to flag, OWB, you pull it out, you go right over the steering wheel. Even more reason why you should be training to get your gun out. All day? Concealed. Two days, three days. I think at some point in time, 
it's a little bit more dangerous to go IWB, holstering into your shirt every single time, 15, 20, 30, 40 times in an evolution. Do that times five Here's the hours, problem. six I don't, hours. I don't see many people doing both. I could maybe get on board with switching back and forth, but you know, most of the classes we go to, everyone looks like G.I. Joe. Freaking Rambo. And we're doing, cool. and, and we're doing vehicle stuff. That's all great if you're, you know, if, if you're trying to get your gun out because you're probably because you're probably didn't buckle and you're, and you're you're sitting there in all your kit and you're gonna you're gonna you're, you're gonna grab your gun out of your leg your thigh out of your thigh holster and draw out yeah that's that's it is a lot safer but what are you gonna do when it comes time to defend yourself and you've never drawn a gun out of out your holster before so I think one other issue with your argument is that you're considering that all the people taking classes are just like you and I civilians taking these classes. Oftentimes, there's five, six police officers in a class. They're usually the same five and six police officers in the class because we train with the same instructors. But they do wear IWB every day. They wear body armor every day. They have to train like this. And I think what ends up happening is to be more like them, to relate to these people, whoa. They, uh, other people want to also wear these kits. Yeah. And, uh, I, have, I have no problem. If, if, if you're Leo. Okay. No problem with you wearing your your work gear mm -hmm. to train, but mm -hmm. I also think it's important for those guys when to be training IWB in these classes because they probably train. I would hope that these guys are also training outside of these civilian courses that that, that we go to. I'm hoping that they're getting more professional Leo training, and they should be wearing their work gear then. But I also think it'd be good for these guys to show up to these courses running slick because that's what they're doing when they're not at work. They should be training IWB because they carry both, both ways. But I think we're, we are more specifically talking about average Dusty, average Greg, average guys who, who train showing up looking like G.I. Joe, Tactical Timmy, when as soon as soon as it, it and, and literally as don't soon, get on that boat literally tactical Tammy literally as soon as class is over oh no these guys unkit put their put their sidecar holster in put their put their mag back in their new mag put their p365 back in their holster no. and then they and then they drive off no only to then put that stuff back on the next time they go to the range and play because it's clearly way more comfortable way more fun and the biggest thing that I haven't even talked about yet is nobody likes to have their junk burned. And we all know after five, six, seven rounds, it starts to get hot, 20, 30, 40 rounds, you're gonna have a little Glock shaped brand down there if you. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't already have, eventually you're gonna build up a callus. And you're gonna I, I don't want a callus down there. <laughs> That's not the place I want a callus. I'll take a callus on I my mean, hand. I, I, will give it, callus I, I, will, I will give you this mm. it, is, it is more comfortable. Yeah having all your kit hanging off of you. I get that. I get that it's more comfortable. It is, yes. But you have to ask yourself, what is the point of me training? The point of us training has always been, and probably will always be, to defend ourselves. But there are other reasons to train. You can train because you like to sport competition, okay. right? These people may carry an appendix rig to save their life, but when it comes to competition, it takes it is doable to beat somebody in OWB. I've seen many people on the internet do this. We know many people who can do this, but it takes much more time, effort, and practice to get your time higher. And the goal for competition is to progress as quickly as possible. And eventually you have to go to a competition rig. Hey. Now necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to a competition rig, but I think that the training time is far less for OWB. So I think you're kind of proving my point, which is, Train for what you're training for. Train, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a competition shooter, wear your competition stuff when you're training. Absolutely, you should. Maybe. If you are Leo, train in, in your gear. If you're a civilian, then you should be training how you carry every day. And even for the competition shooters, if, if they carry, which, Let's be honest, a lot of competition shooters we know don't really carry. Yeah, most, I'm going to be honest, it's most competition a, shooters are just competition they're shooters. Just, they're, they're, they're playing a game, and I get it. Yeah, their gun and stuff is like a golf, golf rig. 
Yeah, they're, like, they're literally push your own. Pull it off, put it in the trunk. I get that. Golf strollers. Right. But it is a shooting but, sport. But I get it. And thus, if that's if that's what you're training for, yes. then wear that stuff. But I think you said something early, and I wrote it down because because and you said this several times. I know what it's gonna say. I don't like it. I think it's. I because think you what you're doing down. here is wrong. Because you said we like to go to the range and dress up. Yes. Is literally dress up. Is literally the thing that frustrates me. Is you have guys that are going and dressing up like they're getting ready for war. It's, it's fun. I mean, tell me you never dressed up like anything. I know you have. I know I mean, exactly. On a Friday what you night, I'm getting ready to go to the town. Mm-hmm. I might put a dress on. You put know. on your wife beater right. and you pretend to uh, be the chain. guy from Die Hard. I know this, okay? We all look up to people, and sometimes it's fun to kind of just put yourself in their shoes. Right. Here's the thing. I'm 100% for civilians owning whatever they want. If you want to own nods, you want to own plate carriers, you want to own, own all that stuff, I'm 100%. I, I think we should have full auto. I think suppressors shouldn't be. A, I, I think we should abolish, abolish the NFA. I think it's garbage. I am 100% full freedom to have all that stuff. I really don't have a problem with people owning that stuff. And if you own it, you should use it. But let's just be realistic in spending time training with your IWB, with your daily carry, and not every time you go to the range. Dress up like G.I. Joe. I like to Don't just play see dress people up. training. If you're out there training, I think you're doing fine. You keep doing you. But uh, I will say this one thing, and this is one thing that pisses both of us off. Don't show up to a concealed carry course OWB. It's not concealed. It's like, it's like taking your Porsche to an off-roading area. Yeah. Right? I can't tell you how many, like... Concealed carry basic classes we've been to. It drives me nuts, dude. And guys wearing thigh holsters. And but I am curious, kind of, to see what the audience has to say. Mostly the six people who are going to watch this video. Yeah. I know you're going to have something so to say. So we've put out two sides here. We decided we're going to die on the hill of we the all side know who's right. of, of the side that, that that we got that we got. <laughs> so you let us know which one of us is right, which one of us is wrong, but. I do want us to, 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 be, to, to be clear on, a, on the most serious note possible. We do 100% believe 100% in freedom of oh, the Second yeah. Amendment, the purpose of the Second Amendment. I do think that we should be ready and prepared to defend our country. And that's likely, yes. hopefully, we have the time to put on our kit. We understand and, and the Constitution, is what you're saying. Yes. Yes, and we understand and the need for we, it. We do have a duty to be patriots for this country and defend our country if that time ever right. comes. And I do believe we should be trained and know what we're doing with that gear to defend our, our, our country. But I, just, I wanna lay that out there so we don't get a bunch of hate thinking that we're anti-2A. I we, think you should lay down the hate. We are 100%, <laughs> we are 100 believe in training, 100% believe in if you're gonna carry a gun, you should train with it. We are 100% believe that whiskey is awesome. And, uh, and you guys probably think we're wrong. So let us know in the comments. I hope you don't think we're wrong. Why we're wrong. That. Which hope. side you think is the right side. And also let us know what you guys think we should debate next. And uh, actually, we do have a yeah, topic. We had, we had for, a topic put together. For next time. I, so I think we're going to stick with some of the mm. gun, mm. gun oriented stuff for a while. We are thinking eventually we're going to kind of get outside of, of the typical tired gun, gun comments. But. Uh, but we want to start with what our our uh, our subscribers know us for, which is gun-related stuff. So, which one do you think we just, these we should do? Oh yeah, that one. The first yep. one. Yep. All right. <clears throat> we are going to debate nine millimeter versus forty-five ACP. Two world wars, baby. <laughs> capacity, capacity, capacity. <laughs> well, All right. So you taking forty-five? I guess so. I guess I'll take nine millimeter. We are going to. Get up on our hill and get ready to die for it next week. If you have any other ideas of what we should do next, let us know in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching this very first Whiskey Wednesday, and we will see you next week. Hey, and if you really like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. Maybe hit the little bell icon, because we're going to put out one of these for a week, once a week, for a, a little bit of time. Right? Yep. All right, guys. See you.